Hello, 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 everybody. I am so excited to be with you here today and to um, share with you this masterclass that I put together for you. And I, I, you know, I'm really, really hoping that you take a lot from this and um, you get as much out of this as I um, think that you are going to. So um, I want to just first start by welcoming you to the masterclass, The Energetics of Standing Out and Selling Authentically on Social Media. I am so super excited to be here with you guys, and I'm absolutely grateful that you have taken the time to commit to yourself and to your business, whether you're watching it live with me now or you're watching the replay. I know that you are here because you are ready to step into your next level of growth. So today I'm going to help you to gain clarity around why you might be feeling stuck when it comes to grabbing the attention of your ideal clients and selling effectively on social media. We're going to talk about how you can shift the energy within yourself and your business so that you can start confidently and consistently enrolling more clients without having a huge audience, hustling, or using inauthentic sales tactics. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. Good. So I wanted to put together this masterclass because... I see so many online entrepreneurs struggling to make sales or hustling to make them, and I know that there is a better way. In the online space, there is a huge emphasis on strategy only when it comes to selling. And while, of course, we need to have a solid strategy, what I have found in working with thousands of heartlet entrepreneurs is that traditional strategies that are taught in business coaching programs don't typically resonate with those of us who identify as being more spiritual, more sensitive, more empathic. They typically feel uncomfortable, pushy, manipulative, and for the most part, inauthentic and often out of alignment with our core values. They also take a cookie cutter, one size fits all approach when it comes to selling and I've been doing this long enough to know that while it might work for the person teaching, it isn't necessarily going to work for everyone who they are teaching it to, okay? I believe that all strategies work to a degree, okay? But there are factors that go beyond strategy alone that will not only influence your financial success, but your sense of fulfillment and joy within your business and really your overall life. So while I know that you have massive gifts and the ability to help people tremendously through your products and services that you sell, you may not always feel confident in the marketing or sales aspect of running a business. And because, of course, we need to make sales in order to have a business, we need to learn how to do that in a way that feels aligned to our core values the unique needs of our business, and in a way that's energizing instead of exhausting. Does that sound good? So this training is not going to be around sales strategy. The tools, the techniques, how to reach out to someone, what to say in a sales call, how to follow up, how to overcome objections. I do teach those things in my Selling from Your Soul Abundance Academy. However, without the concepts that we're going to talk about today, none of those are going to be as effective. Instead, we're going to talk about what I believe is the magnifier of all those things. It's the secret sauce that separates one person who's taking all the right action on paper and doing all the right things, yet is not having the same success, as someone else who has all the same strategies, templates, scripts, and techniques. And all I ask is that you bring an open heart and an open mind and that you open yourself up to the idea that there might be a different way to do business, a way that is more aligned, more energizing, more fulfilling, a way that doesn't have to be so hard. So if the pandemic taught me one thing, it is that our world needs a lot of healing. Would you agree? People need our solutions to help them physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, 
in their relationships, in their finances more than ever before. And if we couple that need with the amount of free marketing and access that we have on social media and the internet, our potential to reach our ideal clients is better than it has ever been in the history of humankind. So why is it at a time when people need our solutions more than ever and we have access to the greatest free advertising platforms are people struggling to make sales? So there are many reasons why this is happening, and we're going to explore some of these today. So social media is crowded, and it is more important than ever to know what sets us apart and be able to communicate that to our ideal audience. Okay. The second thing is that as a result of spammy marketing and sales tactics, our potential clients don't know who to trust. Okay. Most entrepreneurs are focusing on business strategy only without looking at the energy and the psychology that is influencing their results. And then the last thing is that there's this false narrative that says that success equals sacrifice, which leads to hustle and burnout. And we're going to dive really deep into all of these. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of some of the things we're going to talk about today. So who am I and why should you listen to me? <laughs> well, my name is Ellie Sibright and I have been in the holistic wellness industry since 1999. I started my own company, Carmi Healing Solutions in 2012. I am a holistic business coach, an authentic selling specialist, and a Reiki master teacher. I'm also the founder of the Selling From Your Soul Abundance Academy. I help healers, coaches, and wellness-based entrepreneurs primarily to authentically stand out online and inspire social media followers to step into their paid offers without hustling or pushy sales strategies. I have trained thousands of professionals in both healing modalities and business growth for over 23 years, and I have helped um, entrepreneurs who are in a one-to-one -one, um, service-based model, group programs, courses, selling retail, and network marketing, pretty much every sector of business I've either been in or I've helped people in, okay? And I have two amazing daughters and one stepdaughter. I got married in 2018 to my love, Bob, who is also a heartlet entrepreneur in the wellness space. And together, we have built a million-dollar online business to support the life that we want, which includes a lot of family, fun, flexibility, and travel. So I learned at a very young age that the way that I viewed selling was different from how most of my colleagues viewed selling. My dad was a service-based provider who owned his own business, and he always talked to me about giving from a place of service, really caring about those who you are meant to help, putting their needs first, and then as a result, you build trust and the money will come as a result of you being in integrity with your core values and serving. And so as an energy healer, I understood the role that energy played in sales and that the intention to serve always had to be at the forefront. And I understood how to create more trust and connection with potential clients, as well as how to allow my own intuition to guide me around what to say in order to serve them at the highest level and help them to make an empowered buying decision if that was their most aligned next steps. So when I started my career in the spa industry, I used my degree in psychology, which helped me to understand human behavior. And I combined that with my knowledge of energetics and authentic selling to consistently have the highest sales in my department, as well as the greatest retention. And so my peers started to notice how easily I was able to make sales, and they wanted to know what my secret sauce was. And what I realized working at the spa and with thousands of entrepreneurs ever since is that even though I had been shown a different way by my dad, most of my colleagues viewed selling as being gross, slimy, pushy, manipulative, because this is what they were taught. And because this was the only model they had been shown, they assumed it had to look this way. 
And as heart-led entrepreneurs, many of us who identify as empaths, we always want to act from integrity. And unfortunately, many traditional business models just don't feel authentic to us. And because my colleagues had been taught a different way, they struggle to make sales. And this is what I see online now more than ever, because there are a lot of spammy tactics and they are in our face more than ever. And I am here to tell you that sales does not have to look this way. Sales in and of themselves are not bad or wrong. It's how we've been taught that feels slimy or inauthentic. Sales are the invitation into transformation for your potential client. It's the energy exchange that happens that allows you to open the door to take someone into transformation. So are they innately bad or wrong? No, it's simply the way we've been taught. So I have spent the last 23 years showing entrepreneurs how to grow their businesses authentically and how to use energetics to deepen their connection with their clients. Instead of chasing or hustling, to use energetics as a way to draw people in and inspire them to take those next steps with you naturally and to create a sales system that is authentic and unique to you. So one of the most important concepts to embrace if you want to stand out online, become magnetic to your soulmate clients and inspire them to step into your paid offers is that everything in the universe is made up of energy. All your thoughts, your emotions, your beliefs, your experiences, your actions, your intentions have an energetic frequency that can now be measured by science. Think about physics class, the atoms and the neutrons, the protons, the electrons, right? All of the physical matter in the universe when broken down into its tiniest form is simply energy or vibration. Your relationships have an energy. The quality of your health has an energy. Everything and everyone around you, all of nature, animals, are made up of an invisible energy that connects us all together. And so we have this unique energy field, and that is a blueprint of your life's experiences, your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions, your desires. Even our past memories and traumas and belief systems are held in our cells energetically and can get triggered when we're in situations that remind us of that original event. And so although modern science can now confirm that we're made of energy, cultures around the world have known this for thousands of years. Now, this energetic field is also connected to your intuition, your inner knowing, as well as the divine wisdom or universal wisdom that surrounds us, the guiding force that you may feel within you when you have a sense that something feels off or something feels really good. That inner knowing that we sometimes tap into where we feel pulled to follow a path or a direction, even if we don't know exactly where it's going to lead us to or why or how we're going to get there. So as an energy healer, I knew how energy applied to our emotional, physical, and spiritual health. I understood that certain life experiences, beliefs, and thoughts that we hold in our energy field could affect our body, mind, and spirit. But what I didn't understand, which I do now, is how your entire business is actually an energy. So something that is really important to take note of is that, is that your business is an energy and it's an extension of you. You are the lifeblood, the heart, and the soul of your business. And it can really only grow to the extent that you grow personally, spiritually, and professionally. So when we're connected to our life purpose and we're offering our services from a place of alignment with our core values and what is exciting to us right now, everything shifts. We're approaching our business with an open, expansive energy rather than one that is based in fear or obligation, expectation or hustle, or I should be doing this, even though I don't really enjoy it, as an example. 
Our business is abundant when we are listening to and honoring our own intuition and we are building our business from a space of authenticity, excitement, and inspiration. So your results in your business are a reflection of not only the strategies and the action that you're taking, but the energy in which you implement those strategies, your internal beliefs, your thoughts, your intentions, and energetic patterns. So for instance, if I'm told that I should use a private messaging strategy, but I've only been shown a way that feels spammy to me, I might make the assumption that all private message strategies are spammy. But if I look at a private message conversation as a way to authentically connect with my audience, learn what they're experiencing, and then take that information to improve the topics that I write my content around because I'm listening to their needs and serving them at a higher level, does that feel slimy? No. So if I look at private message conversations or sales conversations as an opportunity to hold space for someone to feel heard and seen and only if I feel like I can help them, I would offer an invitation into transformation. Does that feel gross and slimy? No. So it's your perception about or the energy that you hold about the strategy that you're using that is actually what matters because that is what will influence how you show up when you take that action and your potential client will feel that. So the person who implements the private message strategy and the energy of service is going to feel infinitely more confident than the one who sees those conversations as having to be slimy, gross, or pushy. The person who feels they're gross is going to lack confidence and certainty and therefore almost always lack sales. Now, there is a slimy way to approach selling through private messenger and there's a heart led way to sell. So of course, it's not only about the energy. However, it is the combination of knowing how to approach those conversations with the right energy and in the right way that will drastically impact the results that you have because someone can feel that intention on the other end of the message or the sales conversation as an example. Now, let's say that I have this great marketing strategy to promote my program, but inside I'm not lit up with excitement about what I'm offering, or I feel uncomfortable about putting myself out there on social media because I'm worried that people are judging me or I'm afraid to look pushy, or maybe I'm not confident in my own abilities and I question if I need more experience. Then that energy comes through when I go to take action in my business and ultimately impacts my results. So I might be doing all the things, writing the emails, doing the Facebook lives, posting, writing the content, but the energy behind what I'm doing is that of uncertainty, fear, and doubt. So the person on the other end is going to feel that. But if I have an offer and I believe that everyone in his mother needs to know about it, and I have 100% confidence and certainty that I can help someone, and that the transformation that I'm providing is life-changing, then my ideal clients are going to feel that for me and they're going to want to reach out to know more. So having a strategy and taking action is one thing, and of course we need those elements, but the energy in which you show up in your business is either going to accelerate that action and catapult your results or make you feel like you are pushing a boulder up a hill. Right. And so just checking in with yourself, how are you feeling in your business? Does it feel like things are just moving and grooving and there's momentum and there's action and it feels easy? Or do you feel like there's a ton of resistance and you are pushing this boulder up a hill? Okay. The energy or the intention behind that action is like pressing on the accelerator in the car and giving your business that gas and momentum, or it can be like hitting the brakes. So if you're not feeling energized or motivated to take action in your business, it is often because there is something underlying that is causing that block and that energy is what will slow things down. And we want to take a closer look at what that might be. So when it comes to selling 
and building your business overall. We typically operate in one of two energetic patterns that significantly influence our results. We either think, act, and make decisions from our primitive fear-based survival self or our highest self, the essence of who we truly are at our core before false beliefs, expectations, experiences, and life disconnected us from our power. Now, the default that we all operate from is always going to be the survival self. So unless you've done the deep personal and spiritual development work on yourself, and even if you have, the survival self is typically always going to want to run the show. And unfortunately, this is the version of us that does not support our growth and expansion. It is the version of us that is programmed from an evolutionary standpoint to stay stuck, to look out for danger, to stay safe and in our comfort zone where no one can judge us. There's no risks of failure and there are no uncomfortable feelings for us to experience. And that worked really well to keep us physically safe from the wild animals outside the cave back in the day. But when we apply it to a growing business, it is exactly what keeps us from playing full out and confidently offering our magic to the world. When the survival self is running your business, you are operating on the default mode of scarcity and fear-based patterns. You are making decisions based on your mind, which is known to fear, doubt, worry, catastrophize, and go to the worst case scenario and essentially give you every reason why it's not safe for you to raise your prices, to put yourself out on social media, to say what you really want to say in your content, to post too many times as an example, or to put that offer out that you've been wanting to put together. It is the one that tells you not to switch directions in your niche, even though you want to, not to offer something new or different, even though it's exciting to you, not to reach back out to do follow-ups because you look too pushy, or not to ask too many questions during a sales conversation because you don't want to look too salesy, when in actuality, the right questions can help someone to make a more empowered decision. And frankly, not asking those questions, I believe, does them a disservice. It's the one that keeps you in overthinking, overgiving, procrastination, people pleasing, and perfectionism. Can you relate to any of those? Now, many traditional sales programs are based in the survival self or scarcity model of selling that feels slimy, greedy, manipulative, and cold because they are all about getting someone out of fear or desperation. They're more based in what feels like chasing and hustling rather than attracting and serving. The stereotypical survival self as it applies to sales is about getting to the top, climbing over your fellow man or woman, dog eat dog, doing whatever you need to do for the sale, slamming someone into something they may or may not need or want, focusing on the sale or meeting the commission rather than the human in front of you. And unfortunately, most of us know what that feels like to be sold in that way, right? If you've ever received a spammy cut and paste message from someone who you don't even know on Facebook, doesn't take the time to get to know you and then immediately asks you to buy their thing. Does that make you feel a connection to them or make you feel like they care about you or inspire you to take action? I don't think so. So the survival self way of operating in sales is, not who we are at our core. It's out of integrity with who we wanna be. So this way of selling does not resonate and we don't wanna associate ourselves with this. So for many of us, we just don't take action at all. But that isn't the answer either. So this is me in 2012. Before I hit rock bottom here, I had felt a calling inside to move in a new direction But my fears and my insecurities stopped me from listening to my intuition and going after my desires. I had been living in survival self for years, acting, reacting, and making decisions in my business from my fear-based patterns, which were keeping me stuck and overwhelmed in hustle. And on top of that, I felt a lot of pressure to bring in more money, which caused me to work a million hours often ignoring my family, afraid to step away from the business for fear of losing a client or money. And this frustration of not feeling like I was offering what I really wanted to offer 
in combination with fear around not having enough and operating in this scarcity mode led to hustle and eventually complete burnout. It took a serious toll on my physical and emotional well-being as well as on my family. I spent more time staring at screens and engaging with my loved ones. I was pulled in a million directions, feeling like I was on autopilot in life and not feeling connected to either my work or my loved ones. And it is safe to say that the business that I had created was not supporting the life that I wanted because I was operating from my survival self. My body eventually gave out on me. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, a chronic pain condition that kept me disabled, in bed, and unable to care for myself or my children. And I spent the next three years searching for answers. I discovered a nutritional detox protocol that not only brought my body into balance and allowed me to heal, but gave me the opportunity to earn an additional stream of income, sharing it with others in a way that allowed me to leverage my time. So I stepped into the next chapter of my life with a renewed sense of purpose in sharing what had helped me to heal and with a new perspective around growing a business from a place of alignment to really learn how to work smarter instead of harder and how to structure my business so that I could have the freedom and flexibility to be present with my kids without worrying about where the money was coming from. I was able to massively increase the results that I was seeing in my business working less hours because the energy in which I was taking action from was no longer based in fear. It was based in excitement, passion, and service. And my strategy was in alignment with the life that I desire. So I became magnetic to those who I was meant to serve, which allowed me to thrive without sacrificing my physical, mental, emotional, or relationship health. Health. I was able to go from disabled and headed for bankruptcy to a thriving business that lights me up every day once I learned how to build my business from my highest self rather than from my survival self. So let's talk a little bit about what that feels like. When we're acting from our highest self, we are connected to that part of us that feels a calling to something bigger. It is the part of us inside that yearns to make a difference and feels no fear. The true essence of who we are. It is when we feel connected to our life's purpose, our mission, our message, that we can take inspired action in the energy of service. And instead of trying to get someone or chase and hustle, we become magnetic. When we're showing up from an empowered place and offering our gifts of transformation unapologetically without worrying about being judged or how others perceive us, we feel energized and alive instead of unmotivated. We're connected to our own intuition and that voice inside that's showing us a glimpse of what is possible for us. When we're honoring that voice and moving in that direction, that is when the path of abundance opens up to us. When we're focusing our energy on approaching sales from our highest self, it no longer becomes about me and how I'm going to feel and about how people might judge me or how I don't want to be salesy or how I'm afraid to fail or even to succeed, right? And we begin to instead shift into how can I serve? We're connected to that greater purpose. And so when we're building our business from our highest self, we're not approaching sales from the standpoint of getting anyone or or desperation, but how can I connect with my soulmate clients on a deeper level, right? And we're no longer attached to whether or not someone is going to buy because we aren't taking it personally. We understand that they are on their own journey, and if they're meant to work with us, then they will. So we don't put pressure on ourselves or on them to make that decision. We simply show up with the information, and we create a space where they can ask questions about whether or not not, this is their most aligned next step. And we create our sales process from our highest self. We are trusting in our own intuitions to serve. We're not worried about saying the right thing, rather listening, connecting, being present with the person in front of us and giving honest feedback around whether or not we can help. 
And we are also choosing a sales model that fits into our lifestyle and allows us to be in our zone of genius. Maybe for you, it feels exciting is to do webinars, live video and challenges. Maybe for someone else, they want the flexibility of having private message sales conversations that are authentic while someone else would rather just hop on the phone. There really is no one size fits all. And the idea is that when you're building your business from your highest self, you are honoring your own needs, passions, and desires while also serving your client at the highest level. So I created my Selling From Your Soul Abundance Academy because I wanted people to know that there was a different way to sell, a way that is heart-led and service-based, a way that puts the client first and trusts that when you do that, the abundance will follow a way in which selling is simply an energy exchange that allows you to make an invitation into transformation. It's an opportunity for you to hold space for someone and walk them through a process of making an empowered decision to change their life. And with that decision, they reinforce to themselves that they are worthy of having a healthier body, a bigger bank account, a deeper connection in their relationship or whatever it is that you help someone with. What I want you to remember is that selling from your soul is about sharing your gifts from a place of trust in your own intentions to serve while holding space for someone as they make an empowered decision for themselves and then honoring them for wherever they are in their journey. So we talked about how your own internal energy um, impacts the results in your business. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about how the energy in your business, um, how the energy in your business and how your potential clients are either feeling attracted to it or repelled by it, okay? We are constantly exchanging energy with our friends, our family, our partners, our strangers, and even our potential clients. We may say things like, I really like their vibe, or I don't like the vibe of that restaurant. When we do that, we're connecting with our intuition and we're getting a sense of, or we're reading a situation and deciding if we want to stay or go, right? And so some of you may be unconsciously feeling into the energy of this training. And you might be thinking like, who is this again? And how did I get here? And why is she so excited? And this is kind of annoying. Hopefully that's not what you're thinking, but if it is, it is. And others may say, ooh, I like this. This is resonating with me. I like the things that she's saying and the feeling that I get from being on this training today. I'm gonna stay and listen. And so your potential clients are reading your energy from the moment they come into your world. When they come to your Facebook page, they are deciding whether or not they want to keep scrolling or stay on your page and stalk it a little bit more based on how they feel when they are there. They're looking at your profile and your content and every aspect of you and your business that they're exposed to, and they're either consciously or unconsciously deciding whether or not they feel connected to you. Do they trust you based on the energetic feeling that they get, the vibe, if you will? Do you make them feel safe? Do you make them feel like you understand their struggles? When you're in a private message with them or on a sales call, do you make them feel like you actually care or that they are just a number? And so communication is 80% nonverbal. Maya Angelou says, people don't remember what you said but how you made them feel. Think about someone you know in the online space who's magnetic. You are interested by her, you're drawn in by her, you wanna know what she has to say, you like the way that you feel when you consume her content, she draws you in. What are the characteristics that are drawing you in? Think about that for a second. What makes her magnetic? Is she positive on her feed? Is she inspiring? Or is she always complaining about politics? Probably not. Is she real and raw? Does she confidently speak her truth and that feels refreshing, right? Your potential clients are either unconsciously or consciously reading your energy as well as deciding if they wanna continue consuming your stuff 
or even to take those next steps with you. Okay, so when we're looking at the health of your business, we have to look at not only how our energy is impacting our confidence as we show up and take action and the way that we feel about our offers when we go to sell them, but how our energy is making our potential clients feel. Okay, so science tells us that your energetic state or frequency is going to attract people and situations to yourself to match that frequency. So let's say that I am someone who wants to attract clients who are focused on their goals, willing to invest money in themselves, ready to take action in order to change their situation. However, I am not embodying those characteristics, right? How many of you would like that to attract people who are committed and focused to attract soulmate clients who don't have a victim mentality, who want to take action and are willing to invest. Let's say that I want to attract those types of people, but I'm not embodying those characteristics myself. I'm easily distracted. I'm procrastinating. I'm not prioritizing myself or my growth. I'm not taking the action needed to improve my situation. I'm not creating boundaries around my time and energy. Then I will likely attract people who are doing the same. If I'm not respecting my time, then I'm going to attract people who ghost me when we set up a call. I may be hearing the money objection a lot from potential clients and attract people who don't value my services. And while, of course, we want to take a look at how you're positioning your services and where you're finding these people, and that's where the strategy piece comes in, we also need to take a look at how you are valuing your services. What is your confidence level around your product and your services, as well as your own feelings of worth and views about selling and money in general? When was the last time that you raised your prices, as an example? If there are belief systems or energies that are out of alignment with what it is that we desire, then we are going to attract people to reinforce those beliefs. So our external world or our results are mirroring our internal world. If my internal state is one of overwhelm and chaos and fear and doubt, then I'm going to be an energetic match for more experiences and results that keep me in that state of overwhelm and fear and doubt. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy of which one comes first, the chicken or the egg. On the other hand, if I'm conscious and intentional about working on my internal state and choosing to put myself in situations and surround myself with people and experiences that help to raise my energetic vibration through experiencing joy and gratitude and excitement, for instance, then I am tuning my frequency to attract more situations to be joyous and grateful for. So I want you to just pause and think about that for a moment. Are the, are the thoughts that you're having, the beliefs that you're holding, the actions that you're taking or not taking in alignment with your bigger vision and with your purpose? Are they on a frequency that is supporting your vision or pushing it further away? And there's no right or wrong here because when we know better, we can do better, right? And that's the cool thing. Our present results are a reflection of our past thoughts, beliefs, feelings, actions, and habits. Our future reality, we create now by taking our power back and choosing to align those things with that next level version of what it is that we want to create. So I came up with six energetic non-negotiables. Um, when it comes to standing out online and selling authentically and effectively. And we know that based on human behavior and human psychology, that people need to feel something before they take action. And so if the goal is for someone to take action, such as reach out for more information or click a link or buy a product, we have to help them to get into a feeling state. So I'm going to go through the energetic non-negotiables. And as I go through these, I want you to just kind of rate yourself one through 10, where you feel you fall. One being, I need a whole lot of work. 10 being like, I'm crushing it. I got this. Okay. And these are the pillars from my own signature method 
um, in my selling from your Soul Abundance Academy um, and what I help my clients with in order to attract and enroll clients consistently. So the first one is connection. And I've always said, like I just shared, that the process doesn't, the sales process doesn't begin, you know, when you get on a call with someone to tell them about what you do or when they go to a sales page. It begins from the moment that they come into your world. It starts with how you make them feel on an unconscious level that helps people to determine whether or not to even be open to hearing about your business, right? Do they feel connected to you as a human? Do they feel like they can relate to you or that you understand them? Do they like your energy and how you make them feel? Are you positive and, re and relatable, right? Are your interactions authentic with them? Um, and do they resonate with your core values and the things that you're posting about, right? The language that you use. Are you approachable to them and do you show vulnerability um, as well? And so I believe that people are really craving connection more than ever. And I know that there's a push in the, in the online space, especially for more automation and business rather than person-to-person -person connection. And don't get me wrong here. I have plenty of things in my business that are automated. I do feel that going that extra mile to make a personal connection with your audience is important, especially in the type of work that we are doing and offering products and services that are transformation-based. And that is why one of the pillars in my program that I help people to weave into their business is that pillar of connection, right? Where can they create more connection in their content, in their social media presence, in their authentic conversations with their potential clients? I believe creating this kind of connection and long-term relationships is really what helps to build a sustainable and loyal clientele. So really starting to think about where can you bring more connection into your business. The second C is clarity. Potential clients need to have clarity from you. Who you are, who do you serve, what do you do? If you are trying to talk to everyone in your marketing and specifically when you go to promote your offer, you are really talking to no one, right? So do you have a specific group of people that you enjoy working with and a specific problem that you feel called to solve? When we talk about how our program helps with sleep and weight and immune system and energy, we're being too vague in our messaging and then people just don't connect with our content. So we need to take a step back and think about whether we have clarity around who we wanna work with and what specific problems we wanna solve and whether our marketing is clear or confusing to people, right? Really diving into what are the clear outcomes that somebody can expect from us. Now, you might say, well, I help people with weight loss, which is fine, but do you help postmenopausal women release the belly fat? Because that is a clear and specific outcome. Or do you help men over 40 lose the dad bod? Or do you help women with thyroid conditions release the excess weight? Do you specialize in working with new mamas and helping them to lose the baby weight? The more clear and specific that you can be when it comes to marketing the outcome of your offer, the more likely your ideal client is going to resonate with that. Because let's be honest, creating content for the new mama is completely different than the postmenopausal woman, right? And I know that your offer can help a lot of people, but what are you most excited and passionate about? The majority of entrepreneurs that I work with, even if they have narrowed down their niche, don't have it narrowed down enough for their ideal clients to know they are the perfect fit. Weight loss is a niche, but who are you specifically working with and what aspect of weight loss are you focused on? is important to share. And then going even further than that is understanding what I call the soulmate characteristics of your ideal client. We're not only looking to work with the people who have the problem that we solve, but how can we use languaging in our marketing to call in the right types of people who are open to the way that we solve the problem or who are at a part of their journey that would most likely give them the best results? 
if I, as an example, am providing a solution for chronic pain and the methods that I use involve natural solutions such as meditation, herbs, and essential oils, then I wouldn't want to be speaking to someone who has chronic pain but is only looking for medication and not open to my way of solving the problem. And so I have to weave that into my marketing and into my messaging. And this is something that I help my clients with to discover what their own secret sauce and their unique methods are, as well as who would be the ideal candidate for those specific methods and what are the qualifying factors that would ensure someone gets the best outcome and then create marketing messages that are clear enough for those sole clients to recognize themselves and know they would be a perfect fit. So the next one is charged up. And I know this may sound a little bit funny, but are you lit the F up about what you are doing? Are you energized by what you are offering? Do you want to shout about it from the rooftops? Because you are so excited to deliver this offer and you know that so many people can benefit from it. Oftentimes when we promote what we think people will want or what they'll pay for, even if we're not totally lit up about them and they're not as exciting to us as maybe they used to be, right? Maybe these offers were exciting to us at one time, but now we're bored, right? Or we feel drained by them, right? Is there a way that we can put a new spin on what we are offering? So if you've been doing one-to-one -one work as an example and you're feeling kind of bleh about that, right? Maybe you're feeling called to do a group program. Or maybe you're tired of working with busy moms and you're more excited about working with athletic women who want to improve their performance, right? So is there a group of people or a new problem that you feel more passionate about solving right now? I would venture to say that for most of you, the product you have or the service you offer can do a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So which problems do you feel most charged up about helping people solve and why is that important or exciting to you right now? And I always ask my clients if success were guaranteed, would you be offering the same products and services in the exact same way as you are currently offering them and to the same people or is there something else pulling on your heart right now? Now, there have been many times in my business when I was offering something just because I knew that I could, but it wasn't lighting my soul on fire. And that led to a lot of resentment, burnout, overwhelm, and frustration, as I shared with you earlier. And so getting into alignment with what was lighting my fire, right, I then had endless motivation to build my business because I was running on passion and excitement, and that fuels creativity and puts you into a flow state where you are in alignment with what you're offering, okay? And, you know, here's, here's the reality. Very often when people don't buy what you're selling, you automatically assume that they don't want it or that the marketing was off or the price was too high. And that absolutely may be the case. Those are all very valid things to look at, but what we don't tend to look at is our own energy around the offer. Were we excited about it? Did we have 100% certainty around it? Were we excited to deliver it? Because when you're offering, um, when what you're offering you are completely lit up about, that is when you become magnetic to people. They feel that. And then the next one is certainty. We give our potential clients certainty when we are able to create the gap between what they've been doing right now to fix their problem and why it isn't working, and instead what they need to be doing, why they should be doing that, and how our way of solving the problem is better or different. And this is where we really get into the positioning of your offer. This comes down to really digging into what your beliefs or philosophies are around how to fix their problems, understanding what your unique method is to help people and being able to confidently explain how that is different. Okay. And, and all of us have this, we all have a unique method and a unique philosophy and belief system. And we do things differently, but most of us have not defined that clearly. Okay. 
Um, and so what you need to do is be able to communicate that you have a way of solving the problem that others don't or that is new or different. And part of showing up with certainty is just really also digging into understanding who is and is not right for your program or your services and where they need to be on their journey to fixing the problem to make them an ideal candidate. Okay, really diving into looking at the patterns of who you've been able to help in the past and what are the common themes that they had and the common outcomes that they experienced. And this is what we get super clear on in my Selling From Your Soul Abundance Academy. This not only allows you to increase your own confidence and what you're offering and know how to create content around the different pillars in your method, but it allows your potential clients to feel that certainty that you can help them. Okay, understanding your unique method and your pillars as well as how to communicate this to your ideal clients is key in order for them to truly see the value in what you are doing, right? And a lot of times when we hear the money objection from people, it's typically not related to the price. We often think it has to do with the price and it almost never does, right? But more has to do with the perceived value. And this formula for positioning your offer is critical in order for your uh, potential clients to really see that you are the no-brainer for them to work with. Okay. And part of how we do that is in our content, is in creating compelling content. Um, this is an incredibly important skill to learn because when you know how to create content that connects and inspires people to take action, your content will do the heavy lifting for you. And this could be social media content, it could be live videos, sales pages, webinars, and even understanding these elements when you're in a sales conversation is really important, okay? Most people I find create content that stays way too much on the surface and does not go deep enough to connect with their audience. And as I said, from human behavior and sales psychology, people do not buy with the left side of their brain, which is all about facts, figures, and knowledge. They buy with emotions, and then they justify with facts and figures. So we have to look at if you're connecting emotionally in your content. And the majority of marketing that I see online is in the opposite. It's people promoting what they sell instead of why someone would want to buy it. Now, let me explain. Most people, when they promote what they do, talk about the actual product or service they offer. They focus on the logistics of the program or the ingredients in the shake or the quality of the supplement. They focus on the features of the product or the service. And when we do that, then we are simply selling a physical product that anyone could buy off the shelf and they don't see the value. If I'm focusing on what the product or program is, like sharing the benefits of the ingredients or focusing on what products come in the kit and how you use it, and you might say like you eat one meal a day and you have two shakes or you get 10 different oils in the kit or my program has 12 different modules in a Facebook group. I'm focusing on the logistics of what they are getting, which is not inspiring and does not demonstrate to me that you understand what my struggle is or paint the vision for me about what the outcomes are that I can expect. People buy because they believe that you can help them. And so it's our job to validate where they are in their struggle right now, show them that we understand what they desire most and help them to feel certain that we have the missing link to take them to their desired outcome. The logistics of how we take them there is not as important and doesn't typically inspire someone to purchase. Now, that doesn't mean that the details of your product, your, your product or your program are not you know, relevant at all. Of course they are, right? It just means that if we haven't painted the vision of the outcome that someone can expect as a result of working with us, then the logistics are not going to be enough for somebody to be inspired to purchase. Okay. Now, if I take that same nutrition program and now I'm focusing on the outcome or the desire, um, uh, the outcome of drinking that shake or taking my course or um, whatever it may be, now I'm sharing the transformation. Okay, 
And so the outcomes that you share are going to come from what your potential client says that they want, but don't have because of their struggles. This could be things like feeling confident in their own skin and having a deeper desire for intimacy with their partner, getting their energy back so that they're no longer feeling guilty because they're snapping at their kids or they're too exhausted to play with them, right? What is the value that someone would place on that? What if you're talking to somebody who's too exhausted to function and they're yelling at their spouse all the time and they're on the brink of divorce? What do you think they'd be willing to pay for that transformation versus you talking about the ingredients in your supplement or how many modules you have in your program? There's a disconnect, okay? What if you're talking to someone who's in chronic pain all the time and she's about to lose her job because she's missed too many sick days? right? Now she won't have any income and she's afraid for her future. So talking about that, sharing that aspect in stories and in your social media so that they can connect in and really feel the value of what it is that you are offering versus just paying for ingredients in a shake. So it's really important that our content goes deeper and makes that emotional connection. Okay. And so are you helping people to get into that empowered emotional state to trigger them to take those next steps, right? All of these are really, really important and things that we go over in my program. Confidence. Do you show up with unshakable confidence in yourself and your product and your service and your belief that the method that you use will provide a transformation? Right? Or do you show up inconsistently from a place of lacking belief? Do you feel confident in the value that you're providing and in the price that you're charging? Or do you have a nervous, almost apologetic energy when you go to share it? Do you know what sets you apart from the others online and how to share that in a way that positions you as the go-to expert? Because your level of confidence and belief within yourself is going to spill out into your business. And this is something that we work on a lot in Sign From Your Soul, learning to self-coach, right? Um, when the doubts arise, because they will. Learning to increase your inner confidence and your sense of worth. Releasing those limiting beliefs and blocks that are holding you back from feeling unstoppable when you go to share your services, raise your prices and deliver your services. Working and really getting comfortable in the discomfort. Right? I always tell my clients that courage comes before confidence. So we must first take action courageously, learn from what worked and what didn't, and then we course correct and we continue to put ourselves out there. That is when we, we feel even that much more confident, right? But confidence starts from within. It's a state that we must first learn to embody Right. And if we can show up from that state, even before the results are there, we're going to be more likely to attract more situations to ourselves to feel confident about. We're more likely to sell our services when we're taking action in the energy of confidence because our potential clients feel that and they are borrowing our confidence for themselves when they're deciding whether or not to work with us. So how can you show up right now as the future version of yourself? who already has a full book of clients. And then the two bonuses are community and consistency. Now, community, I put this one in as a, not as a non-negotiable because there are many people who have built successful businesses without a community. However, I think this is a really important one because I think it's one of the best ways to build trust with your audience and provide a space where you can deliver value and connection. Um, where you can share compelling content and support. Um, it just really, it, it's what I teach you. It's one of the methods of selling that I teach you in my Selling From Your Soul Abundance Academy, which is, um, you know, how do we, how do we create a targeted group? How do we um, name it? How do we get engagement in there? How do we use it as a way to sell in a very natural way? How do we make sure that the right people are joining? And, and how do we collect data around what um, your people are wanting and what language they use to describe what they want so that we can refine and improve our marketing even better, right? Um, and then consistent, let's see. Are you consistently showing up for your community or do you go in waves and ghost them? 
right? Because people need to see you and they need to see you often so that you will be at the forefront of their mind when they are ready to take those next steps, right? Um, and, you know, when I say this, I would rather you be consistent and showing up with value less times a week than just showing up with a bunch of surfacy fluff. Okay, so it's it really isn't even about how often you're posting. Um, if if you're posting every day and what you're posting is not giving value or it, or it's very surfacy, very kind of cut and paste, right? That's not super helpful. So let's go for quality here, right? I would rather you post four times a week with value based content that you can commit to than every single day. Okay. So we talked about a lot today. We talked about a lot of the differences that I believe, um, you know, are between people who are having massive success and people who are, are having a harder time, even with the same strategies. We talked about how everything in the universe is energy, including your business and how your internal state and the belief patterns that you hold are impacting the action that you are taking in your business and either accelerating it or slowing it down. We talked about the two primary energy patterns that we act from being either the survival self or the highest self. And depending on which one of these energetic patterns is driving the bus, you are likely acting, reacting, and making decisions in one of them and it ultimately impacts your outcomes. Um, we talked about how Science has shown us that the energetic frequency that you resonate in is either attracting or repelling people in situations to yourself, including attracting or repelling clients, and how your outer reality and your results really are a reflection of both your internal state as well as the strategy and actions that you're taking. And so by shifting your internal state to one of confidence, certainty, and belief, as well as tapping into your own intuition and taking action from a place of excitement, inspiration, and service, we can become magnetic to our ideal clients and our business sees that abundance. And we also talked about how people need to feel something from us before they take action. And we do dove into the six energetic non-negotiables -neg as well as the bonus Everything that I talked about today is what I work with um, my clients on in the Selling from Your Soul Abundance Academy. We not only dive into the strategies, but the energy and the psychology that is driving your business and impacting your results right now. We get super clear on your unique and profitable niche, as well as how to create magnetic marketing messages that call in your soul clients and make working with you a no-brainer. We put together packages and programs step-by-step -step that align with your heart and that your clients not only get amazing results from, but want to refer people to you. I walk you through putting together your unique signature method and tap into your zone of genius so that you can communicate the value of what it is that you do with your ideal clients through your social media content, your sales pages, your webinars, and your sales conversations or whatever way that you decide to sell in. And we work on building your confidence and your certainty as you go to offer your services, as well as find a unique sales path for you that captures your strengths and is in alignment with your core values so that you can easily move people from being interested into your paid offers. We work on creating compelling content that not only uses the exact language to uh, call in your potential clients, uh, but connects with them emotionally and inspires them to take action. So if you feel like that is something that you could use some help with, um, if any of the things that we talked about today, you feel like, gosh, that sounds amazing, but I'm not really sure how to start, or I feel overwhelmed or I'm lacking clarity or I'm not really sure if selling from your soul is my you know next best step let's connect okay let's have 
a super no pressure chat because I don't do pressure. <laughs> okay. We just have a conversation. Um, you can friend me. You can connect with me on Instagram, in my Facebook group, through Messenger. Um, so lots of different ways here for us to connect. Let me know. We'll talk about where you're at. We'll talk about where you want to be. Um, I will give you some suggestions as to where I think you need to be focusing on in your business in order to step into that next level. Um, and then, you know, if, if I have a way to serve you, then I'll let you know. If I don't, I will let you know that as well. Um, but I encourage you to, to reach out and um, find out uh, if working together would be a good fit. And I, again, just want to thank you so very much for being here with me today. Um, it, means the world to me that you spent this time and um, I don't take that for granted and uh, I look forward to seeing you on your journey. Take care.